Have you ever wondered how ships stop at sea without brakes? You're not alone. The idea of a colossal ship weighing thousands of tons halting its course in the middle of a vast ocean is indeed a fascinating one. These marine giants, some larger than skyscrapers, don't have the luxury of a simple brake pedal like our cars do. Imagine trying to stop a massive object, not on solid ground, but on a surface that's constantly moving and changing, the sea. It's a task that requires precision, control, and a deep understanding of marine mechanics. It's not as simple as pressing a button or pulling a lever. The process involves a complex dance of physics, engineering, and a bit of nautical know-how. So, how do these giant vessels manage to stop in the middle of the ocean? Let's dive into the mechanics of it. To understand how ships stop, we need to first understand how they move. It's all about propulsion, the force that drives the ship forward or backward. But how does propulsion work in the vast open ocean? Let's start with the basics. The heart of any ship's movement is its engine. This colossal powerhouse is responsible for turning fuel into mechanical energy. But a ship's engine doesn't turn the ship's wheels, as there aren't any. Instead, it powers something far more suited to the aquatic environment, the propeller. The propeller, located at the stern or the back end of the ship, is a marvel of marine engineering. It's essentially a series of blades attached to a hub, which is connected to the engine. When the engine fires up, it turns the propeller. The propeller then slices through the water, creating a flow of water behind it. This water flow generates a force in the opposite direction, propelling the ship forward. It's a classic display of Newton's third law in action. For every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now if the propeller pushes the ship forward, how does it go in reverse? Well it's all about the direction in which the propeller spins. By rotating the propeller in the opposite direction, the flow of water is reversed, and the ship is pulled backward. But moving straight forward or backward isn't enough in the vast, unpredictable ocean. That's where the rudder comes in. The rudder is a flat piece of metal, usually located near the propeller. By turning the rudder to one side or the other, the captain can steer the ship, guiding it around obstacles and along its intended course. So, there you have it. Propulsion on a ship depends on the engine powering the propeller to push or pull the ship through the water, and the rudder steering it. It's a finely tuned dance of forces and responses, all designed to move these massive vessels across the world's oceans. Now that we understand how ships move, we can better grasp how they stop. So, how do ships come to a halt in the vast sea? The answer lies in a technique called reverse thrusting. Imagine you're out on the open sea surrounded by nothing but endless blue. You're in command of a colossal ship, and you need to bring it to a stop. Brakes as we know them in cars don't exist on these marine behemoths. So, what's the trick? Enter the art of reverse thrusting. Reverse thrusting in layman's terms is like putting your car in reverse. The propellers, those powerful engines that push the ship forward, can also be used in the opposite way. Instead of propelling the ship, they create a force against the direction of movement. This force acts as a brake, slowing down the ship. But here's where it gets interesting. The ship's propellers aren't just switched from forward to reverse. They are gradually adjusted to create a precise and controlled force against the ship's movement. This is essential to prevent any abrupt stops that could cause damage or worse, capsize the ship. Imagine trying to stop a car by suddenly shifting from fifth gear to reverse while it's still moving. Not a pretty picture, right? The same principle applies to ships. The process of reverse thrusting is a delicate dance, a nuanced art that requires skill, precision, and a deep understanding of the ship's mechanics. It's not just about knowing when to start the reverse thrust. It's about adjusting the intensity of the reverse thrust based on the ship's speed, weight, and other factors. This is where the ship's crew comes into play. Their experience and expertise are vital in successfully executing this maneuver. So, the next time you see a ship gliding seamlessly to a halt in the harbor, remember the intricate ballet happening behind the scenes. The crew, with their skilled hands, are carefully adjusting the propellers, performing the complex art of reverse thrusting. Reverse thrusting while effective isn't the only method used to stop ships at sea. Apart from reverse thrusting, ships also rely on their anchors and sea brakes to stop. Let's take a moment to appreciate the unsung heroes of marine braking, the anchor and the sea brake. Picture the anchor, that classic symbol of maritime life. It's not just there for decoration, you know. When a ship needs to stop, the anchor is dropped into the sea. This heavy piece of metal sinks to the seabed, and as it digs in, it creates a significant amount of drag and resistance. This resistance acts against the ship's forward motion, helping it to slow down and eventually come to a halt.
But what if the sea is too deep for the anchor to reach the bottom? That's when sea brakes come into play. A sea brake is a device that is thrown overboard to create additional drag in the water. Much like a parachute in the air, this device opens up in the water, increasing the area of resistance against the water's flow. The effect is a significant slowing of the ship's speed. It's important to note that these methods aren't as instantaneous as stepping on a car brake. Ships are massive, and so is the momentum they carry. Slowing them down is a process. A carefully calculated dance between the ship's mechanics and the sea's natural forces. Though these methods might seem simple they require a deep understanding of the sea and the ship's mechanics. Stopping a ship at sea as we've seen, isn't as straightforward as hitting the brakes in your car. It's a complex dance of propulsion, artfully managed by the ship's crew to slow its momentum. Then, there's reverse thrusting, a remarkable technique that brings these marine giants to a halt. Anchors play their part too along with the somewhat mystical sea brakes. All these elements come together, requiring skill and knowledge to safely stop a ship at sea. So, next time you see a ship gliding smoothly to a halt in the harbor, you'll know just what's happening beneath the surface.